and welcome back to the general store this is episode six i'm here with my good friend ganon hello and i'm here with my good friend nathaniel hello so we missed this past wednesday our schedules have been getting a lot more conflicting and busy in the past week so we're thinking about moving our upload schedules to sundays although I'm not exactly sure when this will be released. This might be released on um, a Wednesday, and then there will may, maybe be one on the, the Sunday immediately after, just to kind of make up. Um, we haven't decided yet. It all depends on um, how well we can get our schedules a little more in sync and in control. So I feel like a lot of the stuff that delays us from recording is very much like things that we have out of our control. Because, like, last that time I tried true. to record, what happened with you? Last time we were set to record, you had to, like, go out of town suddenly? <clears throat> um, yeah, that was a while back. I uh, went to go pick up the husky we just got. Mm -hmm. But that, that was a while back. And then, well, no, uh, like, at one, like, you had to go shopping with your mom or something like that. Yeah, we went, we went to Harrisburg to pick up the dog. Oh, okay. I thought we you went, like, grocery shopping, shopping or something. All yeah. right. So, we got a couple interesting things to talk about since it's been more than a week we got quite a, a layup of uh things so we do nathaniel you've been busy oh actually first um you were sick for a while weren't you yeah um i'm thinking i got something uh while i was overseas probably what 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 happened to you what were you like fever were you sick were you no nope, never never got a fever never vomited uh just that's a good v very bad like just under the weather like allergies yeah like it was a cold yeah you just got like a yeah. super bad cold yeah okay yeah but uh there, there's a lot of uh people that apparently get sick with air travel um they get colds just from the recirculated uh air in the cabin of the plane um well yeah you, know, you, you just, gotta just think about thing. it all the people that are getting on a plane None of them, odds are none of them were in the same area. They all went to different places and have now all come together in this airplane. So there's all this yep. different areas of geography, especially like on a return flight, something like that. You know, like you go overseas, people are bouncing from country to country all the time over there because they're so small. Yep. So everybody has generally, I think people in Europe are going to have a decent immune system because they've been exposed to all this range of stuff. But you mm -hmm. just you just hopped the pond and went right into the cesspool of diseases over there. You know, it's sort of similar with, like, the Indians. Um, to put it bluntly, yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. It, it's sort of like the um, Indians, you know, when, we, when uh, they got smallpox. You basically got smallpox. <laughs> well, uh, not, not exactly, but yeah. I mean, um, people travel a lot more than back in the 1600s. It's so easy now. Yeah. Let's see here. Uh, Signs and symptoms of smallpox. <laughs> I'm pretty sure smallpox has been eradicated. I'm pretty sure you get a vaccine for it when you are a child. Um, no, you get you get ch uh, the chicken one. Chicken, chicken pox, pox, not smallpox. Although they're making they're making you do the stupid booster shot now. Did you get that? Yes. The second one. I didn't yeah. get it. I denied it. I don't like but I don't like shots. So I don't really either. Well, yeah, I haven't gotten a flu shot for two consecutive years. I've never had a flu shot ever. Uh, Neither has my mom. Neither one of us my, have ever had the flu. My shot was like three, four years ago, and that was the HPV shot. Yeah, your first one. Um, yeah. When I first went through college, you know, I had to take those shots, and they they did them throughout the year. So I had to take three human papilo papillovirus, which is HPV. I had to take mm -hmm. I think three times on that one. And they, they did one for meningitis, because uh, that's a big problem in college. Right. Uh, they did one for H... Uh, no, they did one for... Oh, Jesus, I was about to say chlamydia. That's not right. It was another STD. <laughs> what was it? It was... Um, oh, HIV? hepatitis. It was one of the hepatitises. Oh. I think it was hepatitis A, and that's a two-shot. But the thing is, with that one, it fucking burns when it goes in. HPV huh. is okay, but like hepatitis one just stings. Your arm's sore for the rest of the day. Yeah, I every single shot I've gotten um that I can remember, I've had whelps on my arms. Yeah. And yeah. It, I've never had that. I never I never broke out. I just felt a little woozy and like uncomfortable for like a few hours, you know, because right. suddenly there's now a virus in me that 
is sudden and wasn't gradual or anything. So I'm suddenly like, whoa, what the fuck? Which unless, is why, which is unless, why I'm kind of against flu shots. Well, I'm, I'm against flu shots because unless our area or the country is affected by something like the swine flu again, there's no reason to get the flu shot. The like yeah, the Ebola. flu, the flu is <laughs> not as terrible as it once was. No, you can you, you can know, now, for the now most we have part... non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs we have well, acetaminophen helps. although that have... has its own range of problems like tylenol overdosage and like liver damage and cirrhosis and shit like that so yeah but if, if you have a flu for two three weeks yeah if you, if you take the dosage like you're supposed to you'd be mm. responsible there's there's be fine very yeah. very little risk yeah the only real chance that you could get any worse from a flu is if you somehow catch pneumonia through a flu because i know that can happen and that can kill yep. you yeah. But that rarely ever happens now. Right. But I'm kind of against flu shots because a f the flu is a virus that is consistently changing, right? And it's very, very common. There's always an outbreak like every year, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to say the government's controlling the outbreak or whatever to administer behavioral drugs or whatever. You know, I'm not saying that. I'm not, I'm not saying flu shots are a government conspiracy or anything. But like flu shots... You're, you're giving yourself, essentially, you know, a vaccine, you're giving yourself a bit of the virus, whether it's inactive or dead or whatever, you know, or a small amount of living virus, right, to create right. the beginnings of an immunity. And then your body, you know, becomes quote unquote immune. And it works for most things, especially bacterial stuff. But with a virus that is super common, usually it, it can be yearly, like people can have a, the flu at any point in the year, you know what I mean? I know there's a flu season, but it can still happen. So you have to think that, like, in the air around us, there is probably the flu all the time at a very low amount. So right. I feel like whether or not your body, if, if it's enough to make your own vaccine without a shot, but I feel like your body can manage it. But once you shoot a bunch more of it into you with the, the vaccine as well as that, I feel like it can it's it's sort of like a 50 50 shot but if you get the flu then you're good for a year it's sort of like sort of like that you yeah. know what i mean a lot of a lot of people develop uh very light fevers and they have a lot of symptoms of co uh the common cold yeah once they get a flu shot and it's just because you know you've your body been is, given is upset yeah your, your body is now fighting of this with, virus right your body is now making antibodies and and i can i can fevers. see their logic i can see their logic behind doing this but uh there's there's i personally do not do not like getting the flu shot i don't like getting any shots i just hate needles i remember i remember when i was in middle school i um i i had to get some sort of shot and i just sat in the doctor's office room and cried for like an hour and like no. my dad had to come and like hold my hand and he like lived way the fuck far away at the time so like not as far oh, wow. as where he was when he was out of, you know, across the country, not there. He was still local, but, like, he had okay. to, like, leave work, come. It was oh, really man. embarrassing. But I've never I've never had good experiences. Like, have you ever had a filling? Have you ever had a cavity? In, in your tooth? Yeah, yeah. I had a very, very small one, yes. Okay. When I was little, I ate sugar all the time, Re really badly, right? With my baby teeth, I had seven fillings. Right, yeah. my, my teeth were yeah, my teeth were falling apart. Luckily, that wow. was all baby teeth. So then, you know, adult teeth came through. I have two now. Right, I have. Well, it was one, but it had spread to another one. Right, it created another one across because it was on the bottom. It was like my molar in the back left in the bottom. Mm -hmm. So I think because my teeth, I I like clench my teeth a lot. I feel like I kind of spreaded the plaque to the top because there's one right above it. So, oh wow! Yeah, so it's like straight up and down right there. Hmm. So that is interesting. Mm -hmm. But I specifically remember the last time, the needles for a common shot that you get at the doctor for you know some whether it's a vaccine or you know whatever right. It's usually mm -hmm. a quick small needles, boom in, boom out, you're done right. Right. With the local anesthetic needles that you use for fillings to numb half your mouth, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, first of all, they don't work all the way. You can still feel it and it still hurts, but obviously right. it would be a lot worse with it, or without it, rather.
but the needle is huge. I'm talking like three, four inches, like a knife blade long, right? Yeah, you should see the needle they use to numb your uh, feet when they are removing an ingrown toenail. Yes, because it has to go all the way through your foot, essentially. Yeah. Yeah, the point of anesthetic needles is that the, the liquid or whatever serum that comes out of the needle, it's it will affect the area around it. So if you need to go across something, you have to put a needle all the way through and then go all the way out and inject it through as you're right. going out, like like squeeze it through on the path you made. So you have to make a, you have to have a really fucking big needle. And I remember, like I was, I told them I was like, all right, fine. I'm I was much better with it. I just said I'm gonna be squirming a little bit. My legs will be squirming, but I'll keep my face as still as possible. Uh, ignore the fact that I'm squirming out. All right, it's just because I'm freaking out about yep. needles. You know, just ignore that. I'm not actually in pain. It's just, uh, you know, fear <laughs> needles. And it wasn't a little bit of pain, but at that point, you know, I'm not going to be like, actually stop, you know. I have a fucking needle in my mouth. But the thing is, I, I could feel it because he's holding it, right? And I closed my eyes and I could feel... Of course, you'll have that kind of weird dissociated pain of feeling the needle go through because yeah. you, you already have like that little topical thing. But I could feel his hand and the plunger part of the needle, like not the needle part, I could feel it moving across my like lip, across my mouth. I'm I'm covering my mouth as I do this, which is really stupid because I'm recording a fucking podcast. But <laughs> it, he 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 went. It felt like the needle went out the back of my my jaw, right? Which my jaw already uh -huh. pops, so I know he got into that cavity there. Not cavities in tooth cavity, but like hole in right. your body. So like whenever I would open my mouth, and that part of my jaw would click, because my jaws click, right? Right. Mm -hmm. That's yeah, all. That's all my jaw. <laughs> yeah, it's nasty. It's on both sides now. It used to just be the left side, but mm -hmm. he had gone in so far to the left side that he had got to that part. So whenever my jaw would pop, just searing pain, right? Because it was super sore. Yeah. Because a piece of metal just went through it. But yeah, that wow. was so traumatizing. Feeling the guy's hand brush across my whole lip just to know that he has gone like three inches into my like gums. Whew. It was horrible, man. Man, Hating that is one way to test if you've gone far enough. Have you ever, have you ever had surgery? Um, I had the one filling. No, I don't think so. Okay, you've never actually had a a, a surgery where you were put down on anesthetic. No. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I was very, very young. Uh, probably. Do you remember it well? Six and eight. Yeah, I got tubes put in my ears. Oh yeah, did you have like both, a, a, both a fluid buildup or something in the middle ear? No, I uh, I had like chronic ear infections, so I just uh, right. So they needed something to filter out the, 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 the fluid. Yep, I okay. still got ear infections. They weren't as bad. Yeah, I've only had one ear infection. Um, the main thing with ever ear infections, because sometimes I get a lot of uh, earwax buildup. I, I make too much earwax, so I have to clean that out. Is right. you get. You mix, um, you can look this up on anything, but you get a little plunger, like a needleless plunger. Right. Not like a toilet plunger, you know what I mean. Yeah, and you fill it. Know. You fill it halfway up with no more than 3% hydrogen peroxide, like that black bottle in the bathroom, and half mm -hmm. with uh, lukewarm water. Because if it's too hot or cold, it'll make it dizzy. And what you do is you lay down on your side and you drip it into your ear and you let it sit on your eardrum and bubble and fizz and like break up all the earwax. And it... it I'm I'm very very cautious with my ear, so it always scares me because I feel like it's dissolving my eardrum. Because that's, that's what it sounds like, uh, you know. There's yeah. fizzingness on your actual eardrum. It's yeah, loud. it's a bone. It's not going to do that. No, your eardrum's not a bone. It's a flap of tissue. The muscles around it are. You know, you got those three little tiny muscles, but that that's not going to that that's not part of the drum directly. That's part of the middle ear part behind it. It's just no, mainly okay. just a flap of tissue and nerves. Huh. Um, it's a very, very thin tissue, so I'm always nervous about it. And I have sensitive ears. I have tinnitus or tinnitus or whatever, the ringing in their ears. Mm -hmm. I've had it, I think, all my life, so I don't think it's inflicted by sound damage. Because I've had it, like, way before I was in drumming. I can definitely remember it before drumming. Right. Obviously, it didn't get any better with drumming, but I was still careful with it, and it didn't necessarily get much worse. It's never been, like, very minor. It's always been kind of a pain in the ass. Because I also, and I've told you this loads of times, I have insomnia. Right. Right, which means it's it's like sporadic insomnia to where there will be just a week period to where no matter how damn tired I am, I lay down 
and I just can't fall asleep. And I just right. have to lay there motionless for like three hours before I can mm-hmm. fall asleep. So yeah. that combined with ringing in your ears in a dead silent room for hours, you know, it's it can be a real ball ache. There's this thing. Uh, have you ever heard of the hum? The hum? Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, like the tinnitus, but hum. yeah, that's tinnitus, but that's a low range tinnitus. I have yeah, a higher yeah. range. I have more of and, a, uh, a more another, of a buzzing or ringing. Another weird sleeping thing. There is a. Uh, there was a study done in the UK, uh, done about a like a shotgun blast mm-hmm. or like a baseball bat hitting a pot right next to your ear, right when you are like slipping off into sleep. I did. I just did a like a swooshing motion with my hand. But anyway, when you when you are in the process of falling asleep, you you're you're. It's called the it's called asleep. hypnagogia is the state between awake and asleep passing into sleep. Okay. Well, yeah, exactly. When yeah, you go when, when you're that's when in Tetris that state can happen. I've talked about Tetris effect on here before, yeah. I think. You hear a extremely loud blast. Well, like yeah, a shotgun, shotgun hitting a bucket. Shotgun blast. No, <laughs> a shotgun blast or a baseball bat hitting a a pot or a pan next to your head. And um it's actually caused people to commit suicide. Oh. Because it, it happens so often uh, when they are falling asleep at night. It's making people they get scared to fall asleep. Massive explosion. Oh, so somebody's not actually doing this? No. No, it no, no. It just happens? Um, there was a study done in the UK, as I mentioned. Yeah. And um, I, th- I thought it was like after somebody that... shot a shotgun next to their ear, they're afraid to fall asleep. I was like, what no, the fuck? No, there, there, <laughs> there was a study done, and one, one of the theories suggests that it's a air pocket or some sort of clicking in the brain okay very close to the eardrum and it's actually behind your ear but it, it right. sounds like it's but it's ex- a vibration external. so it picks up yeah it's it sounds like it's external well there is something called the nasopharyngeal duct which runs from your inner ear and it goes through your like the tissues under your jaw and they go mm-hmm. into your throat and that's how pressure and excess fluid is supposed to come out. However, usually it's it's quiet. You know, whenever you pop your ears, what you're doing is yep. you're forcing pressure out, and it makes a little pop noise yep. because then it's parking, it's it's popping open and shut again. So yeah, whenever I had extremely bad ear infections, that's what I had to do to relieve all the yep. pressure build up in there. Yep. So you know, like yawning, or you could blow in your nose, but that can be dangerous, and all you know, all that crap. Yeah. But. That that duct might be what's causing that. Maybe something's going on where the duct has a spasm, some sort of disorder. You know, it could they be. They may have mentioned like that. that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm sure they probably looked at that because that's you know a biological thing right next to it that can make noise. So I'm sure they looked yep. into it at some point. Yeah. Um, and another thing is, um, not PTSD, but it's like a hallucination of a. Uh, I can't a phobia, right? Like, like spiders or snakes um, or something, right? Uh, if you hear a massive explosion, and your your natural tendency is to like run the opposite direction, right? You know, maybe it's fight or flight. Someone, and someone if who it's has an explosion, same, I'm not fighting it, <laughs> right? Maybe if you have that phobia and someone has the same phobia, maybe they have this uh, this disorder. Okay. So phobia is based on um, some sort of chemical or anatom- anatomical disorder near the ears could cause similar phobias. That's an interesting theory. But yep. but like um, with that, I I think I mentioned I think it was last podcast I mentioned sleep paralysis. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I mean, I wonder if you have you ever had sleep paralysis? I think I asked you, but I don't remember. Remind me of sleep paralysis again. It's when, it's the state of hypnagogia, right? Although it's more in the process of waking up than it is falling asleep, where you are paralyzed and you're hallucinating basically demons staring at you uh, across your bed. No. And that's a really I bad have description. never had it. Yeah, well, apparently it's super common. I've never had it either. But yeah. let's not go into that. I know, I know sure it's we, common, but I know. Yeah, um, I think we covered that last time, so I'm not going to go into that again. Um... But yeah, once again with the the delayed podcast stuff, I did up I did put a post on Twitter. I tweeted 
put a post on Twitter. Jesus Christ. I <laughs> tweeted and I said podcasts will be changing to Sundays. So if you want any information as to why a podcast isn't up or something like that, I will if something goes wrong or if I have any sort of announcement, I will probably put it on my Twitter. So you can check out my Twitter. I'll make sure to put a link down in my Twitter here, uh, down in the description, and I'll try to make a note to to keep that in some podcasts and stuff so you can get some announcements. But, uh, yeah, another reason that we had to switch to Sundays is because um, we're just becoming a lot more busy. We don't have time. As a matter of fact, today uh, I got up early. Well, not super early, like 11. But it was, <laughs> <laughs> it was my day off, okay? Don't judge me. Um, I, needed, I needed a good day off from work. But I was looking for apartments. Uh, with my friend. I'm not going to name drop him right now. I might I might in the future, but for right now, we're not going to worry about the name. I think you know who I'm talking about. I, I know who you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, I mentioned it to you. It, it, so, name's not important. Yeah. So when I've mentioned before a couple of times, Nathaniel's made it very clear that I mentioned it a couple of times about my job at McDonald's. Um, This guy works there too. And I, I knew him, you know, growing up all through elementary, middle, high school. I knew him most of my life. Um, when I, he was basically my best friend. We stopped talking because we were split into always in different classes through high school. Because, like, I always went for advanced classes. He didn't go for those kind of classes. You know, he was in the, 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 um, the lower tier classes, I guess. The regular. <laughs> yeah. Now, I'm not calling him stupid or unmotivated. He just wasn't in those classes. I'm sure if he wanted to, he's got the... Um, He's got the, the the work ethic to do it, you know what I mean? I don't know if he has, like, brain power, but he's got the work ethic for it. So... Well, I, it's, that's the same situation with me. I, I did a standard diploma. I've always been academically sound. Like, I have always gotten straight. I don't see, you, I don't no see you stupid. What? By the way, by the way, I was thinking about this today. This is a complete cutoff uh, tangent here. But you know how I had called mm -hmm. you a redneck in denial and you got all pissy? <laughs> yeah. Okay, I figured it out. I figured out what you are, right? You are a, what's the word? You, you are a, you mimic your, um, oh man, you, you mimic culture, right? So whatever culture that you are surrounded by, you will mirror, right? You like assimilate, like, very well into whatever you're around, right? You're almost French, <laughs> right? You're like the French. So since the culture and the history that you are fascinated with that is locally around you and very relevant to you is a lot of Civil War stuff, a lot of um, segregational stuff, a lot of that kind of history, a lot of rednecks stuff. So I feel like you, you, you're, like a, you're like a redneck... I don't want to say enthusiast, that's not the right word, but you are mimicking the cultures around you, and you're just surrounded by rednecks. So you don't think like a redneck, but you might dress in flannel. You might drive a pickup truck with flags on the back, but you're not, you don't picture yourself as a redneck. You're not actually a redneck. You just kind of like look the part because that's what you're surrounded by. You're you're a redneck by affiliation. I, I wear <laughs> I wear overshirts. They're not flannel. You used to wear flannel. I I have never worn flannel. I own one flannel T-shirt, and it was, is way too hot. What to was wear. that one that looked like um like plaid? There's a difference. You there's always a difference. wore plaid. Let me talk, dude. There's a difference between plaid and flannel. Do tell. Flannel is a type of material. Plaid is a design. Okay. So I wear plaid. And now I've kind of gotten to the Hawaiian shirts. I like the Hawaiian shirts now. I like button-up mm -hmm. t-shirts. There's no... That's not necessarily thing. redneck -y, I guess. No. But I feel and like if... I if... absolutely hate you calling me a redneck. I know. What Whatsoever. So why do you do it? I don't know. I, I just like picking on my friends. <laughs> I, okay. like, I like being I a absolute, dick. I, I do not like fishing. I love hunting, though. Wait, I do, really? I do like providing for myself, yes. I love I, I fishing, really like but fishing. I hate hunting. That's funny. Okay. 
I drive a Ford Ranger, a wow. quarter. No, it, it's it's a ton, but a quarter ton Ford Ranger with a completely outdated national flag mm-hmm. of a con- of a country that has been defeated. Mm-hmm. But you but you fly the flag because you appreciate its historical importance. That is correct. Okay. Okay then. Okay. Um. But I I, but I, I like here. I like not to be I like not to be labeled as anything. Yeah, I don't want to. Yeah, I, like I can pe- understand I like that. people to make a label for me to see me as they see me, not the people hearing this audio right now have they never seen see me you. in person. Yeah, they've never met me. They've well, never spoken unless somebody to me. knows you in person and is watching this because they knew you in person. That'd be an awfully good coincidence, and yeah. you're right there. But uh, well, once you, you see me, once you once you meet me, yeah. y- you will notice I am not a redneck in denial. I'm not southern at all. I'm you, very yeah. intelligent. Yeah, I carry don't... myself well. Yeah, you you talk, and you talk like you are an intellectual. And you definitely do not act or do things that a lot of redneck people do. But I feel that how you are living your life and how you do it, it can easily be mistaken, I think. So so you are a you are if it a can historical... easily be mistaken, it can easily be corrected. Okay. Well you're a historical appreciator with Yeah, but that doesn't make up my yeah, life. I, I am know. who I am. I know. Yeah. If if I was a, if I was like trying to live in the 1860s because I like the Civil War, I wouldn't have bought a Smith and Wesson Bodyguard 380 today. It's yeah, a semi-automatic 380 you, pistol. You would have I, bought I would another be, pistol. I would be you carrying would've... around an 1858 model Confederate revolver. Or I'd just be, another I'd be carrying musket. Carrying a Colt army. A musket man. You'd be carrying another musket, right? Exactly. Yeah. My, um, my entire my t- my entire life is not defined by the vehicle I drive and the flag that I fly on the back of it. Mm-hmm. But um, I just level with me here, right? If you were born, if you still had the same the same like interests that you have, but you were born somewhere completely different. Like, say you were born in New York City. You know what I mean? Somewhere very northern, somewhere very different. There's a lot of culture there. Do you think? You would have looked different. Um, obviously, you wouldn't. You probably wouldn't be driving the same truck. Obviously, just that's just because of coincidence. But like, do you think you would still have the same interests, or do you think you would sort of absorb and appreciate that culture instead of this culture, or do you think you'd still fall back? No, on this ab- culture? absolutely not. I, I'm not going to name the battlefield. That would be extremely foolish. I live on a battlefield. The, the battle was fought here in 1863. Yes. I do. <laughs> anyway. That's yeah, funny. It is funny. If you understand what we're talking about, which no one does. So, great podcast. <laughs> um, I, I, I live on soil that was... Yeah. That was you, fought over. You live on the, an this, Indian, this, this ground was fought over. On an Indian burial ground. <laughs> He's not on an Indian burial ground. He's on a Civil War burial ground. Um... So you you mentioned that you got a new gun. You want to talk about your yeah. gun? Because once can. again, you do you do still have a lot of these like you were interested in concealed carry or I'm sorry, open carry, which like I feel like is still a because you're you are do you consider yourself conservative? I've already mentioned this. I'm I consider myself neither. Okay. I I agree mainly with conservative ideas, but. But you're you're not against um, anything progressive. You're not. There very, are definitely some you're very stupid inter- things that yeah. conservatives say. Oh yeah, and there's also stupid things that liberals say. And I lean a hair liberal. I think you lean a hair conservative. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but anyway, you got yourself a gun, didn't you? And an open carry license. You do not have to have a license to open carry. Really? I can walk into Walmart. I can walk into McDonald's. I can walk into Food Lion. And you don't need any documentation? You do not. You can open you can openly, visibly carry a firearm. Right. Wh- whatever firearm you want, really. 
Can you just go like full on like Mad Max mode and have like fourteen shotguns like strapped to your back and just walk around Walmart? <laughs> I'm sure it's if, something if like that. If they were all done. legally purchased and registered, yes. Wow. I mean, that's America. You probably you. get kicked out, but yes, you could. Yeah, that's true. They do have their own laws, don't they? Walmart has their own uh, rules about don't carry fourteen shotguns. <laughs> In the Walmart. In Section 12, Article C 24A. You are allowed only up to four shotguns per visit per, <laughs> per, per person. <laughs> uh, yeah, but you got yourself a pistol. You said it was a Smith & Wesson 3 something? 300 something? Uh, Smith & Wesson 380. It's a Smith & Wesson M and P bodyguard 380. So it's an S and W M and P. <laughs> it's yes. just a joint collaborative <laughs> gun. It's just M&P, have the alphabet gun. Which... I have no clue what that stands for by Smith & Wesson. Okay, so it's a subsidiary is what it is. So we will it's, refer it's a, to it's it. It's a, a Myth & Pesson. <laughs> yeah. You if, got a Myth & Pesson gun. <laughs> if referred to in the future. I'm, I'm going to call this we'll, episode Myth & Pesson. <laughs> we'll, we'll refer to it as the 380. I'm going to call it the fucking Myth & Pesson. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The Myth & Pesson sponsored by Smith & Wesson. Um. Jeez, so... You just got yourself a gun. What's what's the process? Isn't there like a like a waiting period or something like that when you buy a firearm against like impulsive okay. purchases or something? So, because I assume you're not a felon, you don't have a you don't have a criminal history. No. I did this in one well, day, completely legally. Well, I'm not a felon. <laughs> Sorry, you, go on, ignore me. I did this completely legally in one day, and there's very little risk involved. I mean, I, I purchased a firearm the size of my hand. Mm-hmm. If, if you stretch, if you stretch out your hand in front of you, well, I got a big it, hand. It is, that that's fine. <laughs> it, it will it will fit completely in the palm of your hand. Oh, okay. So it's like a little pot. It's like a little um, tea party put in your yeah, sock. Just, kind just of gun. Uh, just look it up. It's a Smith and Wesson M and P Bodyguard 380. Uh, it's okay. a decent size. Here it size. is on screen. Yeah. Everybody, there yep. you go. Uh, it the magazine holds six rounds, but uh, anyway. The process so is it, for... a, is it a revolver? I haven't I haven't looked at it no, myself. No, it's yet. a semi-auto pistol. So it was the Smith and Wesson M and P. Oh yeah, first thing that comes up. Look at that. Fucking Google's listening to me. Oh, it looks very <laughs> much like a cop gun. I was expecting more of like a revolvery looking gun than a magazine no, I, gun. I wanted something quick. If I need, if God forbid, looks like a P two fifty from Rust. I need to disperse. If I need to discharge ammunition from this gun, I need it to be quickly. I don't want to sit there and draw back the hammer and then shoot. Right. I, I got this gun strictly for the purpose of self-defense. Okay. Well, obviously, I, I mean, like... I never have to use it. But... I mean, obviously, you're not going to use it for anyone unless you have to, you know? Obviously. Yeah. So, I met up with the person at a place. Uh... A, a public place. It was a storefront. Um, oh. I'm not quite, not quite sure if uh, we were allowed to have firearms on this place, but it was cased. You know, mm-hmm. uh, I met up with them. I inspected the, the gun at 18 years old in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Uh, I'm just speaking for Virginia. If you're listening somewhere else, this is probably not the law. Um, in the Commonwealth of Virginia, at age 18, you can privately purchase a firearm okay. at a license on a licensed premises a gun broker yes if the, if the person behind the counter has Man, a gun broker's license ammunition you to, yeah you have to be 21 in order to buy a firearm but you can buy any firearm you want privately at 18 right. you can buy rifles and shotguns at 18 in, now, on any now, premises but you can only buy handguns at 21 on licensed premises. You mean at 18? No, at 21. So I brought, you... I bought mine privately, okay. so it was completely legal. I have a bill Every of sale for it. Every time you say privately, it, it peaks your mic. I apologize, listeners. Um, but yeah, like, okay, would you say, um, how easy would it be for you to walk in and buy an AR-15? Let's get poli- let's, let's, let's get political here. You think um, you'd be able to buy to an through... AR-15 easily? Sure, but I would have to wait for it. Okay. But like, did you have? Did you get background checks? Did you get um, any sort of premise prerequisite stuff prior to just walking in and buying a gun? I didn't walk in anywhere. I said privately. 
Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I bought it off of someone. Okay. If I were to walk into a gun store and buy that that damn rifle, the AR-15, mm-hmm. I would have to go through background check, a federal background check, a state background check. Right. I'd have to go through all the paperwork involved with that. I would have to get it registered if it's brand new, if it's used, maybe, maybe not. I'd have to buy the ammunition for it. You'd have to comply with all your state laws. Some laws, you can only have some mods on the gun uh, as far as grips, um, as far as the capacity of the magazine. Okay. In other, in other states. So, so have, we get the point. It's, it's, it's easy if you are very well qualified, but if there is any sort of hiccups, then you're going to have a lot of problems. If you are a law-abiding citizen, you have no, zero things Nothing to worry, to worry about. about. That's good. Um, let's see here. So I want to talk a little bit about um, my friend and I and our apartment thing. I, I pitched the idea to him a couple of weeks ago, and I said, look, we are both working at a job with consistent paychecks with decent amount of money, right? Um, what would, like, how will we go about, you know, like, I, I said, do you want to get an apartment, basically? And uh, it, it, he, he thought about it, and he said at the end of the day that he was down for it. And I was like, okay, well, you have to realize that this, this is not just being like, herpeter, let's get out of our mom's house and buy an apartment. What's going to go wrong, you know? Like, we, I was like, this is a real thing. I want to really consider this. Like, let's do it. Not, let's not rush it. Let's do it properly. You know what I mean? Let's go through these steps properly. So I had been talking to people, talked to my mom about, like, what are the stages of it? We, we were uh, looking around at some places. We were budgeting. Like, after work, we'd sit in the car for, like, an hour, right? And we'd have all these estimates, and we'd budget based on, like, at the very most, we would have this. And at the very most, this would cost this, you know, and all that crap. Um, mm-hmm. Turns out the places we were actually looking at are income-restricted places, right? So makes sense. Yeah, because we're two broke teenagers, so we're not making enough money to actually get like a real apartment that's decently nice. Um, I mean, I could find a real one that's crappy and that's, that's like five hundred, but I haven't been able to even see any of these. So these are kind of our only options, unless we go like seven hundred. Keep in mind for anybody who's listening, I think seven hundred isn't bad because you might be living somewhere upstate or like somewhere with a big city. Um, minimum wage here is seven dollars and twenty five cents an hour, and that's that's Commonwealth wide. Yeah, exactly. But people out of state, uh, or in other countries, so seven dollars and twenty five cents an hour will not cover much, especially when you're doing part time and you can't work more than thirty five. You you can't go more than forty hours technically before they pay you overtime, but and, and that happens all the time at McDonald's because they're short staffed there. And a lot of people just call out and don't show up, so other people cover everybody's shifts and they make a, a whole bunch of hours. But it turns out, I actually called one of these places, and I was like, so here's our income. On their page, right, and this is some good advice for anybody looking for apartments as well, especially income-restricted ones. It'll tell you, because uh, there's like a, a range of prices, right, say like 500 to 600, right, just round numbers. Right. Uh, usually it's a little more than that, although one was a little less. Um, 500 to 600, you have to be within this area or less than this area to qualify. And depending on where you are in that area, it depends on what your rent is, right? It could be lower end around 500, upper end around 600. Right. Believe it or not, we actually have to look at the upper end because we make too much, barely, to qualify, right? We make too much. So I, so I told him, I was like, believe it or not, we're going to have to work less in order to qualify for these places. But how much less can we work to where we can get the place, but then also still have enough money to actually pay for all of our other stuff? You know what I mean? Is mm-hmm. it worth getting a normal apartment for like 700 and then only having 1300 between us for an entire month for gas, for food, for amenities, for furniture, you know, all these expenses that we, you have to consider? Because mm-hmm. once you move out, you're going to spend a lot of money because you got to get toilet paper, you got to get shampoo, you got to get all the bathroom crap, you know, and then you got to get towels, you got to go in the kitchen, you got to find silverware, you got to find dishes and bowls and, you know, all that crap, cups and all of that stuff adds up really fast when you're that tight on money. Yep. So, I told him I was like, "Let's look at September 1st, right? Which is pretty soon, but 
uh, he he said he has some stuff he has to pay off with his dad, right? Because they went 50-50 on a laptop. Well, they went like 60-40, and he has to pay about 600 back. It was about like a $1,500 laptop. Okay. It was like a gaming one. Mm-hmm. And he has to pay some of that back. I am saving up money for my own laptop when I go into college, right? Because the, the one I have right now is, is too old and doesn't last long enough. The battery life is about 40 minutes, and a normal uh, college lecture is an hour and 15, so I can't take efficient notes. Especially, right. like, if I'm not near a power cord, I'm fucked. And I'm going to have four of these classes in a row, probably. Yeah. Or whatever the situation might be. So, I was like, we need to find a way to make just enough less to where we qualify for it. We'll have to pay the upper edge of the rent, but we'll still have enough money for other stuff. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, like, the place that we were really looking at, you actually have to cut down a good bit. When I was on the website, they they tell you the max you can make, right? So... When I did my calculations, right, I assumed on the website it's your net pay for the year, right, combined income, if it's yep. two people. I was looking at the two person. There's like one, two, three, four, or whatever. So um, in my calculations, we were plenty under it, right? Say like, I mean, you look at it, right? Bi-weekly, $500 a check is 2000 a month combined, right? Okay. So it's 24000 at the end of the year. And that's net because we'll, we, you know, we're not we're not factoring in gross when we get our actual paycheck. That's just, you know, the number pre taxes and then what you actually get, and that's what you pay attention to. So that's mm-hmm. what I thought, and I was like, okay, cool. So twenty four thousand. This place says like twenty six thousand. Cool. I call them and they say, we actually use those numbers based on your gross payments, not your net. So I wouldn't qualify because we are or actually with gross we're around thirty two thousand, which is above all the places we were looking at. Yeah. The, the place we really want is like 25,000 and another place that's okay um but it's it's a little farther off. Um for it's a little less convenient for driving is um about 30,000. So we'd have to cut back less so we'd have more money to afford this place, but it'll cost more through gas. Um it's in another city so we probably will end up shopping in that city and that city is going to be a little more expensive uh versus the other place where we're kind of evenly split between where he works and where i go to college right and where i also work because i work at the same place as him but it's, it's so it's it's come down to do we either work less have less money have lower rent and have easier expenses or work a little bit less than we're making, have a nicer place that's farther away with more um, higher expenses. So we're kind of like torn on that right now. So basically what I'm going to do is our deciding thing because we could, we can do both. Like I, I, we budgeted, we sat down, we looked at this and then we were like, this is possible. Well, this could be a real thing. Like all jokes and teenage fantasy aside like this could be a real thing we could actually get out of this place out of our parents houses you know what i mean and that's like that obviously i think that's kind of the dream for any teenage guys the the worst thing to say is like yeah baby i live with my mom you know or if you're having an argument online and you're trying to assert your dominance and you're like oh man i might live in my mom's basement but shit you know (laughs) it doesn't work so I want to get out of my part, uh, out of my house, and into some sort of apartment because we can't afford a house. I'm not even gonna bother looking at renting houses because that's way too much. Um, and it's possible. So I think what I'm gonna do is my determining factor to kind of see like which way are we gonna go with this is we're gonna go and do touring of both places, right? Because we we went today, we drove around all the places because one of them I didn't even know existed because it's so new, it's not on Google Maps. Uh, the availability is a little confusing on the website, right? So I was like, is this place open yet? Is it still in construction? We drove by. It was totally done. There was cars all over the place, so people are already living there. So I'm like, okay, so it's probably possible for us to get uh, this place here as well as another place. We actually looked at three places, uh, drove all over the place, and uh, we we ruled out one because it was kind of crummy. We had seen bad reviews of it before. It's kind of more out of the way than everything else, and it's more expensive. We are like, let's just not worry about that one. Let's go between cheap and in the middle of everything or more expensive and on one side of things. You know what I mean? Right. Um, I think it's going to come down to how we're going to look at 
the inside when we do our touring. Like it'll come down, I think it's gonna come down to the apartment interior itself. Like how the apartment is, the size, the rooms, the situations. I believe both of the ones we're looking at right now is actually two bedroom, two baths. So we won't have to share a bathroom, which I'm super excited about because I don't want to share a bathroom with another stinky teenager. Right. Nobody, nobody does. Mm -hmm. So that's where we're at right now. And we're looking towards, uh, I'm going to look into trying to schedule the touring time that can work with both of our schedules. Uh, mainly that just means like schedule it for more than a week from now so we can call off work. Because <laughs> McDonald's <laughs> is pretty easy to call off work from. Uh, obviously, because half the fucking people there never fucking show up to do their damn job, and I have to do their job for them. Um, I, I had a That's bit of a story of fast food. Yeah, I had a bit of an episode the other, a couple nights ago because I just started my second job, where I uh, I teach percussion at my my old high school for their marching band. So I do that in the mornings, right? I I didn't tell you the breakdown of my schedule here, right? So it started um, this past Thursday. It actually started past Monday, but they didn't want me there until Thursday. They didn't need me yet. So I came in Thursday. It was 9 a.m. to 4 p.m., right? And then I went into work 5 p.m. to 1 a.m. And then the next day, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m., 5 p.m. to 1 a.m., right? And the first night that I did it, this, this long day thing, we had a horrible night where I had these idiotic employees that would rather just sit around and have fucking social hour with each other at the bagging area instead of helping me out where I'm having to cover their asses as well as do three other jobs because they're not doing anything but talking to the manager and occasionally bagging food for me, which sometimes I even had to go back there and do that. So I was, I was more than pissed uh, the other night, but mainly because I was kind of pre-stressed about how tired I would be, you know? But that's nothing compared to this week because I work three nights uh, alternating. I have Tuesday, Thursday off. I called that. And then I work 8.30 to 5.30, although I'm going to leave early so I can go straight to the other job at 5, right? And that's basically my life for the next two weeks straight. Yeah, it's I just started it's wake, up, it's wake up, work, leave, go to the next work, go home, go to bed. I started fast food work at 14 years old. Yeah, you did. You had a worker's permit for it. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. I know exactly where you're coming from. Every fast food worker ever is in your shoes yes. at some point during their job. All of the smart ones, all the ones that are not necessarily care about their job, but care enough about their own ability that if I'm going to do something that somebody's telling me to do it, it's kind of my own responsibility to just do it correctly and do it in good time. You know what I mean? Yep. Let's not fuck around and cuss out employees and cuss out customers and make yourself look like a fucking idiot. I mean, and then not get mm -hmm. fired because the company's desperate for employees, so they can't fire anybody. So that's yeah. people are walking all over the place there right now, right? Like they they're just like not showing up, not giving a fuck about what they're doing, and they're still getting paid because they know that if they get fired, they don't have enough people to cover. Like it, it's almost to the point now where like they don't care how well you do your job; they just care if you're there. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's like yeah. a participation trophy. But then nothing gets done except for the two out of the six people that actually not necessarily know what they're doing, but want to get out, want to get home mm -hmm. and want to do their job correctly enough to where they won't get fired or in a lot of trouble, especially like I'm doing besides the managers. I feel like I'm doing the most work and doing like actually putting the most effort in, but that's just kind of how I am with stuff. So when I go to a, an area where I meet this kind of people entitled lazy half-assers, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's a little bit of shell shock. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what about any anything interesting going on with your job? You you do distribution work, I think, right? You you move uh, product around and like shipping and receiving and stuff like that to go yep. out to retail. Distribution. Yeah. Yeah. What do you what What is your distribution company of? Did you want to say that? No, I don't want to say the company. This uh, gets easier. But yeah, we we sell um, airplane parts across the world. That's not bad. My grandmother used to be a security guard at a gun making factory. They would make certain, they couldn't make all the parts because they didn't uh. construct the guns. They made them a half of the parts. And then they'd go, and like another company would make the other half, and then they'd come together to make the guns. So, like, I think that area made magazines and, um, and chamber, and like, uh, uh, the chambers and stuff, you know what I mean? Like the trigger mechanisms and that part of the barrel yeah. and all that stuff. 
My grandmother was a security guard. She'd have a 12-hour shift twice a week on, on Saturday, Sunday. All right? She would do 11, uh, what was it? I think it was uh, like 9 p.m. to 9 a.m. So it was an overnight, right? Right. And she would do it two nights a week, 24 hours. And it was decent pay. And I was like, that doesn't sound like a bad job. Because my grandmother was a quote-unquote gamer, I guess you could say. Right? She played like essentially can- the Candy Crush of the time, like Bejeweled Deluxe and like uh, uh, Chuzzle and Zuma's Revenge and all that shit. And Luxor. And if anybody knows what the fuck I'm talking about, then you're probably older than me. So <laughs> um, these are like, I'm talking about like my grandmother used to go to Circuit City and buy these CD-ROMs in the case and install them on her computer and play. Oh my God. Do you remember Circuit City? No. Circuit City was like a, a Staples, but more electronic. They're more focused on technology than they were about office equipment. Okay. Um, God. By the way, Blockbuster, you know how they went out of business? Yeah. There is still one open, and the owner refuses to close it. And it, okay. it is it is in it's somewhere in Oregon. Let me look this up. By the way, the Smith and Wesson, the MP stands for military and police. Because like I said, oh. it looks like a cop gun. Huh. So let's see. Where is the last blockbuster? <laughs> The lack, the last block, fuck, the last. Oh, this was eleven hours ago. It's standing in Bend, Oregon. So yeah, I knew it was somewhere in Oregon. <laughs> so there's one blockbuster left in Bend, Oregon. Awesome. Here's a I picture of the front. Yeah, look, look. It doesn't even look like the original blockbuster. It actually looks like um, like a completely different blockbuster almost. Um, <laughs> it, it's like a modernized. It kind of looks like it has like the Hollywood sign a little bit. Here, I'll send you a picture so you know what I'm talking about. Okay. Um, that's what it looks like. It doesn't look like it does. It's not the big blue ticket. You know what oh. I'm talking about? Yeah. It's like a modernized blockbuster. Besides, that's such a good word though, blockbuster. Just yeah. a bad company. It's just a bad business because nobody rents video anymore. Except yeah. like Redbox, I think. Their business has outlived itself. Yeah, it has. It, it's past its prime. It, it, it's, I mean, he's three feet. Sorry, I was thinking of something from Fantastic Mr. Fox. He's one foot in the grave and one foot in a banana peel. So I to say. <laughs> you know what I mean? That blockbuster. Okay. Uh, there's one here. It, he has a Twitter called The Last Blockbuster. And one of his tweets is, Please stop sending us photos of abandoned blockbusters. That's like us sending you photos of your dead grandparents. Oh my god. Oh, the last blockbuster. A lot of people don't know this, but we own a large portion of Netflix. Just kidding, our electricity just got shut off. (laughs) Please stop using the past tense when you speak about us. We're like the opposite of Tupac. Um, Wow. I guess it's because, like, they exist, but everyone thinks they're dead. Versus, like, Tupac, everyone thinks he's alive, but he's dead. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) There's one that's cut off. It says, if we have to rewind one more return movie for a customer, we're... <laughs> <laughs> do, did you ever uh, rent VHS tapes before? I did once when my family went camping. Okay. I, I had a VHS player when I was really little. We didn't even have DVD yet. Mm-hmm. Um, we were very technologically behind. Uh, fuck, when I was born, we had, we had a rabbit ears TV with the dial. Like, it was, it was bad. Mm-hmm. Um, and this was, this was late 90s. So that's like already old but Mm -hmm. yeah we used to go uh we'd rent vhs tapes from our local library all the time and watch like uh magic school bus or scooby-doo movies or stuff like that you know pokemon movies i was super into pokemon movies i just rent them over and over again yeah scooby-doo is great so there's this big sticker right and everybody knows this it's please be uh be kind please rewind you ever heard that before Yeah. yeah that's what that means so when you're done with your vhs Please rewind it so when we stock it, somebody doesn't buy a, a tape that you have to sit there for 10 minutes and rewind. Because it's right. a super pain in the ass. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> I love that. We, if we have to rewind one more return movie. <laughs> it's good. Oh god, now I'm just... Now my fucking screen is covered in pictures of Blockbuster logos. Oh, Jesus. Um, let's see. Uh, let's let's change topics. Let's go on a little bit of a segue here. Nathaniel, hop onto my segue. One of those little hover scooter things that were super popular right. in 2015. Here we go. Hop and... on. Oh, okay. Jesus Christ, Nathaniel. Go. You said you're losing weight, but you can lose a little Sorry. bit more. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're making progress, I'll give you that. Okay. 
I am making a lot of progress. Yeah. Actually, let's have that as your segue. I was going to talk about something else, but let's talk about... You said you lost a bunch of weight? Uh, I've lost 15 pounds. Right. Now, do you think part of that was because you got sick? No. Because not a bit. last time I got really sick, I lost 10 pounds and I kept it off. So, like, okay. I lost weight really quickly. Like, I'm talking about 10 pounds in, like, a week. Because I was really I wasn't, sick. I wasn't really sick. Yeah. I had a little cold. Yeah. Okay. Stuffy well, knows. last time I was super sick, like, I'm talking about, like, fluid is coming out both ends. It's kind of sick, you know what I mean? But I'm still I, drinking water, yeah. so it's not, like, lack of water is my weight. You know, because I, I don't think I would lose 10 pounds of water. Yeah. Because when I was but done, it's very I was still, possible. Yeah, well, when I was done and I wasn't sick anymore, I was still drinking water, but I stayed that weight. So I didn't, I didn't go back up or anything. So I think Never. I genuinely lost a little bit of weight. And I definitely feel skinnier. Like, my pants that I bought a couple of months ago, I bought them to be a little tight on me, and now mm -hmm. I need a belt for them. So, like, I'm definitely yeah, making oh, weight progress. Oh, my pants are starting to fall off me. Yeah. We got a belt. Belt with a big shiny belt buckle on. Yeah, yeah. I've actually had to uh, take a nail. Do you have a Do you have a shiny tune. belt buckle? I was saying something. I uh, actually had to take a nail and make two new holes in it in the past like two weeks. A nail. Yeah, a nail and a hammer make a new hole. In the oh, belt. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, steady. that's right. Belts like the poking a hole through the leather. I I get my belts with the holes already in them, so. Yeah, like no, I belt. I did too, but the belt is too big. There's the I've. Oh, you had lost... to make new holes like on the close end. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's good. I guess I think it's probably time for you to get a new belt at that point. Yeah. Um... No, belt's doing fine. No, <laughs> I don't have a shelter. Sh shiny belt buckle. Oh, that'd be cool. All right. Um. So let's talk about. Um, I talked about my car. A couple of weeks ago this was probably the first or second episode i talked mm -hmm. about the my car was missing some hubcaps had really bad tires check engine light was on so i've um i've had a little bit of an overhaul with my car lately where i was almost late to work because a tire just went out and um as we were trying to fill it back up like we're in the driveway right with the pump hooked up to the, the cigarette lighter and all that so we're trying to pump it up and nothing's happening and then I take it out of the little, you know, the little metal thing that, like, that, that <laughs> you put the, the air through that, like, squeezes when you take it out so it doesn't just blow the air out. You know what I'm talking about, right? Okay. Yeah. yeah. The little, like, inflator tube? Yeah, yeah, the little tube that sticks out on the inside yeah. of the tire that you yeah. fill up. So the whole thing just came out. So it was just, like, a piece of hose. All the metal part that, like, stops okay. the air. It probably dry rotted. Yeah, well, it wasn't dry rot. It looked fine. It just looked like it just came out. There was no dry rot on that. There, granted, there was dry rot on the tires, but not in that area. But it, that okay. might have caused it. I don't know. So the whole thing just came out, and I was like, okay, cool. It's, we need new tires now. We, yeah. they, they've been telling me since last winter I've needed new tires. That's a good, like, five, $600. Yeah, I think we spent at least 400 on new tires. Because uh, yeah. they're just little 15-inch, you know, d dinky Corolla tires, so it's fine. But we got, I got all new tires, uh, finally. Uh, I had my brakes serviced a couple of months back, so like everything moving and stopping is fine now. I still have my check engine light on, but I know what it is, and it's not causing any problems except maybe gas mileage. But it's a Corolla, so it's still it's got plenty of it, it's got plenty of good enough gas mileage that losing one or two is fine. You know what I mean? Yep. Before I could hit like forty, now I'm at like thirty five at the best. Oof. Yeah, it took out a big, but hey, 35 is still not bad versus me having to repair something in my car. Yeah, compared that, that, uh, to your previous gas mileage, it's not fantastic. No, and I bet you at this point, if I did get it fixed once it happened, I probably would have made the money back by now just through uh, buying less gas. But I'm not very good with cars, so it's not it's not causing me any problems, you know what I mean? Yep. A mechanic once told me the cheapest way to turn off your check engine light is get a little piece of electrical tape and put it on top of the light button. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah, so what's going on with you and cars? Uh, my girlfriend's cars had a bunch of problems. Uh, she also spilled. drives a Corolla as well. She does, yeah. She drives, is she drives the same one as my mom's. Black. Yeah. yeah. My mom drives a tan one that looks just like my black one. Yeah. 
I mean, it's her black one too. It's in her name, but it's it's essentially mine for all intents and purposes. Just for tax reasons, it's hers. <laughs> now, now that I'm 18, I've gotten my parents' name almost every. Sorry, can you say that again? You cut out. Now that I'm 18, I've gotten my parents' name all off of almost everything. That's good. I'm still co-signed into my bank account and into my car, and um, I, I think I just split out onto my own insurance recently. I think when I did my last dentist appointment, I got uh, kind of like a, a new thing going on with just me with like basic uh, insurance, like basic coverage for medical stuff. It's not mm-hmm. like Medicaid or Medicare or anything like that. It's just like it's like lower than that. It's just like very basic. Is that basic. through your job? No, no. McDonald's doesn't have any pay benefits, but um. It doesn't have any health benefits. It's just like it's like a financial aid package. You know what I mean? Yeah. One, once I go, but it's uh, not officially time, Medicaid. Once I go full time at my my job, I'll have uh, basic health insurance. Yep. Yeah. Once full time people get that. See, most part time jobs don't have any health benefits. Some do. Um, if you go to like a really nice place, but obviously McDonald's is not going to have health benefits, especially when they know what you're eating. Because what else are you going to do for break? You're either going to pay 10 bucks to get a sandwich, or you're going to eat a free meal of garbage. <laughs> so they know your health ain't going to be that great, so they kind of already were like, don't give them health benefits because they're going to need it. <laughs> yeah. And it's going to cost them money. So yeah, um, my car is good. and your My car, truck is doing fine as well. Yeah, your truck is fine. It was rough when you first got it, but you, you put a lot of time and effort and money into it, and the elbow grease... You were being a man. Remember that? Be a man. Yeah, you were being a man, fixing up your truck, and now it's all good. So now you got to fix your girlfriend's car. What was, um, we'll end the podcast here soon, but what was wrong with your girlfriend's car? Uh, her airbag light was on forever. And mm. then um, they took it to the dealership because... Did it get uh, recalled because of the airbag problem? I had that too. So did my mom. No. Well, oh. it it's possible it did. I don't know. That was before... My okay. time. We I got the recall a few years back, so it's fine. Um, but yeah, they've been they've been taking it back and forth to the dealership trying to get the inspection put on. It's been uh, rejected inspection uh, oh. twice. Fun. I mean, see a couple Two or since three times. since she drives. I think she drives the same year car as my mom, right? And her car is one year newer than me. We actually Great. had a recall notice. That we finally went and did, but we had a recall notice on our airbags, the front airbag, the mm-hmm. I think the steering wheel one, because the metal that was like with the airbag, the chemicals in the airbag were corroding the metal to the point that when the airbag would go off, <laughs> the metal would break. Right? What the fuck okay. did you just message I, I me? Did, I didn't mean to send that. Just I was cleaning, a bunch of numbers. <laughs> I was cleaning off the dust on my keyboard. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. So zero zero two one four. Yeah. So, um, is that your pin number? No, um... No. (laughs) Oh, shit. So, basically, if we were to get into an accident, we would have a shrapnel grenade going off on our face. Like, beeline to the neck. Yeah. Right? Shrapnel grenade straight to the jugular. So, like, we were like, yeah, we should probably get this fixed. Yay, Toyota. Yeah, well, hey, they had that thing in 2006 with their Camrys and the sticky gas pedals. Remember that? Oh, God, no. Yeah, they said sometimes their gas pedals would not always come back. They would stick, and you'd just fucking speed up. (laughs) (laughs) I think it wasn't super common. Probably, like, 20 people had, like, a crash, and they blamed it on it, so they just did a recall on it. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, you're the problem here. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It wasn't me. It was my friend, too. He crashed his car. I don't know. It was right (laughs) behind me, but, you know. (laughs) It's your fault. He ran into my trunk, but... Yeah. All right, well, I think... um, we talked about a lot of good stuff here. I think we should uh, leave it off at this, and then we'll pick it up whenever the next one goes out. Hopefully it'll come out um, next Sunday if uh, if we can get our schedules working. It's something that we can get to work. So thank you all very much. If you want to share this video around, go ahead, go for it. Share it through Facebook. Share it through the Snapograms and Instachats, whatever you want to do. If you liked <laughs> it, leave a like down it down there so we know that you liked it. Leave a comment if you want a to- if you have some sort of topic you want us to talk about, and if you want to just see whenever you get a notification of this, subscribe to YouTube. Click that stupid little bell thing, 
and <laughs> go follow me on Twitch so you can get announcements on whatever's happening with the podcast. And just so you know, you probably won't get YouTube notifications. Nah, probably not. The algorithm's fucked up. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>